these pencil sharpeners uh, started kind of on a whim. Uh, they, uh, I had a neighbor. I was living down south, and I was um, working at a magazine, and came home at night, and it actually started as sort of a way to distract myself. I had gotten a call um, from San Jose, and I, the call had told me it was from my mom, and they had discovered a lump in her breast. And uh, we knew it would probably be cancer. And I was having trouble sleeping. And um, the neighbor came up one day after work, and she basically handed me this old pencil sharpener and says, it's broken. Do you need a pencil sharpener? You can have this if you can fix it. So I took it apart. And I had a studio even down then. I, I have places where I kind of escape to. And I was in my studio one night, and I took this thing apart, and I looked, and I fixed it. I mean, it was just the armature of the motor was stuck, seized. So um, once I got it spinning again, I realized that the motors in these pencil sharpeners are very powerful. They have a lot more energy than just to sharpen a pencil. And I thought, if I can somehow tie into that gear, I can use that energy elsewhere. Next to the magazine I was working at, there was a tarot shop and it had tarot cards and I always liked the pictures of the tarot and so I bought a bunch of, I bought a deck of tarot cards and I thought maybe I can turn this into an automatic fortune teller. I didn't know what I was going to do but I put the pencil in and um, I just let the wheel spin and uh, the arrow stopped and it, uh, I said what's going to happen to my mom and it stopped on the star card which is the card of uh, healing and uh, she didn't heal, but it, it gave me some peace for a while. I realized that after I was uh, in a lot of pain, and yet all of the pencil sharpeners I made during those two years, my wife looked at them and said, they're all fairly joyous. I had one that was a centipede that, that I turned into a flying dragon, and that was a dream that I used to have, kind of a nightmare. I had it in college a lot, uh, where I thought I, could, I would never hit Earth again. In my dreams, I was always floating above Muir dormitory, and I couldn't get down, and then this damn dragon would come and attack me. The challenge of this one was to make it out of a different armature. And so uh, I had some old Tinker Toys in my studio, and I started fooling around with those. They tell me things that I didn't know while I was building them. And this one I didn't have a name for. And I sat down, and again, I think I'd finished it in the evening. And I knew this was going to be the Christmas present to my wife. And I didn't have a name yet for it. And uh, then it hit me. I knew that life was just a momentary dance. 